So welcome to the fourth lecture of Ultimate TOC course. In this lecture, we are going to see about grid, grid machines. Okay. Before I start the course, before I start the lecture, don't write the notes. Entire notes is given to you in the description. Download it. And these slides will also be given to you. And the next thing is, uh, watch my videos at 2x speed. That will save your time. I will be very slow while explaining concepts. So you have to watch it at 2x speed so that you can save half of the time okay and then this is a free course i'm giving everything for free so only thing that i expect from you is to please like share and subscribe okay you subscribe and tell your friends to subscribe okay so let's start it now we will take a simple problem and introduce grid we will take a simple problem and introduce grid okay so let us say sigma equal to a comma b two symbols sigma equal to a comma b two symbols now the language is set of all springs which contain exactly one a and exactly one b so set of all strings containing exactly one a and exactly one b now if there is exactly one a and one b what is the language it is a finite language which contains only two strings right so this language is nothing but finite language which contains two strings a b and b a that's it a b and b a so you have to accept only finite language whenever language is finite there will be finite automata there will be uh regular expression there will be regular grammar okay so what i mean to say is if a language is finite it is definitely regular but every regular need not be finite okay you can make a note of it it will be in the book okay now now what we will try to do is we will try to accept this finite language okay you have to accept a b and b a right so one way is you can start from the start state and if you see a a followed by a b you accept it and if you see a b followed by a a you accept it right so this is how you can build it but then with experience or later i will tell you later i will tell you that we will see it later that two states can be equivalent in the finite automata and those states can be merged right so with experience i am doing it but there is a procedure to it which i will talk about it later okay so what i mean to say is this final state and this final state can be merged into one right so what i mean to say is we can write like this a b accept it b a accept it right so this is how the skeleton looks like this is not a dfa because for this state you have described about what happens on a and what happens on b for this state you didn't describe about what happens when a, a comes here we didn't describe about what happens when a b comes here you didn't describe about what happens when a a b comes right so you had to fill all those blanks right now if i get a a here what does that mean i have seen a a and if i get one more a it is two a's and that is not in the language you have to kill that string right therefore from here if i get a a i am going to kill it i am going to kill that state or this is dead state or trap state so once i see two a's i'm going to kill this string and the string is going into dead state it will never come out of it okay now here also after seeing a b if i see one more b again i have to kill it i have to kill it right because there are two b's now how did you reach this state you have seen either a a b or a b a now after that if you see a or b again you have to kill it because number of a's and b's are not one right therefore if you get a a or b you are going to kill it now this is a dfa you can see that for every state we have given what happens for every state we have given what happens when 
A comes or B comes, right? So this is the DFA and with experience, I can tell you that this is minimal DFA. Later, there is a procedure to find out whether it is a minimal DFA or not. But with experience, I'm telling you that this is minimal DFA. Minimal DFA, right? Now, what is the NFA for this? NFA is so very simple. All that you have to do is remove the dead state. And this is going to be the NFA, right? So NFA has four states, DFA has five states, right? And it looks like a grid, right? So basically what does a grid look like? There will be vertical lines and there will be horizontal lines, right? This is a grid. So all the grid questions we are going to see are going to look like this, right? Okay, that's it. We will see the next example, okay? Now we will see a simple problem, at least one A and at least one B. Okay, so same sigma equal to a comma b. See, they will ask you only about two symbol alphabets. Okay, a comma b. Uh, yeah, sometimes there were questions about a b c a b c d also. There were questions, but most of the questions will be two symbol. If you work with two symbols, three symbols is easy, four symbols is easy. It is not a difficult task. Now the language is set of all strings which contain at least at least one A and at least one B. At least one A should be there and at least one B should be there. Right. So the language is going to be one A, one B, one B, one A, two A's, one B, B, A, A. A, B, A, so on. It is an infinite language. It is a infinite language. Now let's try to construct the DFA for it. Then one more thing let me tell you. For grid, for grid questions, which means this is a grid question. Whenever there is counting, A should be this, B should be this. Whenever there is counting, they are called grid machines. Now for grid machine problems, we cannot give regular expression easily. For this we can give it, but then we will not do that. But in general, no regular expression will be asked for grid machines. Okay, for grid machines there is no regular, there is no uh, uh, regular expression. I mean, regular expression exists, but then it will be too complex to do. That is why we will not do it. And in exam also they will not ask it. Okay. Hmm. So, there should be 1a at least 1a so what we will do is whenever there is counting this is a counting problem right a's are counted and b's are counted right therefore you try to count a horizontally and b vertically or b horizontally and a vertically i will stick to the method where i will count a's horizontally b's vertically right so which means horizontally i will count a's 1a Vertically, I will count B's, 1B, right? Horizontally, I will count A's and vertically, I will count B. I will count B. Is this a DFA? This is not at a DFA because we didn't discuss about. So, this has to be accepted, right? AB has to be accepted. This has to be accepted because AB has to be accepted. BA has to be accepted. Therefore, this is the final state. Okay. Now, is this a DFA? This is definitely not a DFA. The reason is for this state, I didn't say what happens on A. What happens on A? You are, see, this state has seen 1A and it is waiting for 1B. Let any number of A's come, it will still wait for 1B. Let any number of A's come, it will still wait for 1B. Now, this state has seen 1B and it is waiting for 1A. So, let any number of B's come, it will wait for a A. So that this is, this is one path, A's and B's, this is other path, A's and B's, right? So this is starting with A, any number of A's, then ending with B. This is starting with B, any number of B's and ending with A, right? Now, after that, after we have seen A and B or B and A, you can see any number of AB's you are going to still accept it because the question is at least 1A and at least 1B. By the time you reach this state, 
you have seen at least one A and at least one B. Therefore, whatever comes after it, you have to accept it. You have to accept it. This is a DFA. Check it. A and B are discussed. 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 This is a DFA. There is no dead state. Right? So, in general, what happens is, see, you are counting 1A for 1A and 1B. Right? So, how many states you got? You add 1 into 1 plus 1. 4 states. In case if the question is about getting at least 2 A's, let us say 2 A's and 3 B's, at least 3 B's, then number of states will be 2 plus 1 into 3 plus 1, right? So, which is 3 into 4, which is 12. You are going to get a very big grid with 12 states. So, don't do that in exam. In exam, you just follow this, right? So, what is the formula? If number of A's are N, and number of B's are M, then N plus 1 into M plus 1. This is for at least M, at least N A's and at least M B's, right? So, this is the number of states in the minimal DFA. And also, since there is no dead state, this is minimal NFA as well, right? So, minimal DFA or NFA both will contain N plus 1 into M plus 1 states. Now, Sometimes in the exam, they will give you a grid machine and they will ask you, what does this grid machine accept? So, for that reason, you can draw this, you can use this method, okay? For this method, I will just change the color. Let me use this color. Okay. So, now, you draw a horizontal line like this. Oh, color is same, is it? Mm -hmm. So you draw the horizontal line like this. What does these state represent? These states represent. What does these state represent? These states represent zero B's because B's are not seen. But A's can be zero or one or anything. But we talk about B's here. Now, if you look at this state, this line. What does these two states represent? They actually represent one or more B's. Why? You have seen one B and more B's. You have seen one B and more B's, right? Therefore, this is one or more B's. One or more B's, which is nothing but at least one B, right? This is nothing but at least one B, right? Now, I will use a different color. Now, what does this vertical line, these two states represent? These two states represent zero A's because no A's are seen. Now, what does this one represent? This line represents, this line represents one or more, one or more A's, right? Because these two states represent one or two, one or more A's, right? So, which means this is nothing but at least at least one A. One or more A's means at least one A, right? Hmm. Now you can see that there is an intersection. This line, at least one A and at least one B are intersecting here in this state. That is why this is the final state, right? So that is how you do it. Now in exam, they may ask you, in exam, they may ask you zero B's and 0 B's and uh, let us say at least 1 A. Okay. So, 0 B's means this line, this line and at least 1 A means, at least 1 A means this line. Then this one will become the final state. Okay. So, that those kind of questions can come. Anyway, you should know how to count by drawing, how to, uh, how to uh, read the diagram by lying, uh, right, drawing the lines like this, horizontal lines, vertical lines, and then where are they meeting, what do you want, everything. So now you know that why this state is final, because it is the intersection of two lines. One is at least A, one is at least B. Okay. Okay, we will see more examples.
Hi everyone. I hope you have liked our YouTube videos which are given for free. Most of our courses for free, but there are some paid courses as well. If you want to know about our paid courses, please go to the website ravindrababuraula.in. There you can see the list of all the paid courses available like GATE CS, GATE DA. If you are interested in preparing for GATE DS, GATE CA, DA in order to join IITs, then definitely our courses will help you. Even if your plan is not to do masters, doing gate cs will help you will help you get into cloud based companies and doing gate da will help you become data scientists and ml engineers okay and coming to the study abroad so now if you are in a dilemma whether you want to uh, go abroad or whether you want to study gate uh, study prepare for gate and uh, write for the exam please do whatsapp us on the number shown in the website okay you can whatsapp us on this number and there is study abroad program as well you can go and learn more about it right so either you want to go for ms or uh, either you want to go for mtech or you want to join a software industry in a product based company we have all the courses required on our website and all these courses are amazing courses you will definitely love it if you are loving the youtube courses okay thank you